Good morning, everybody. My name is Robert Stevens. I'm uh, the founder of the Geek Squad, and uh, I'm here because I, I love Jeff, too. Uh, I just couldn't turn him down. And uh, so I'm going to talk today about, uh, so I, I didn't even uh, write anything, and Jeff just asked me to come, and he picked the title, so The Social Life of the Consumer. I thought, oh, God, I'm not going to come talk to, Jeff has, like, such a big heart. I'm going to come talk about business and graphs and stuff like that. So. I decided to talk about the anti-social uh, trend that actually I see emerging. So anyway, uh, and this is what I want to talk about because in, you know, Geek Squad, I started, uh, it just turned 18 years old this weekend. I started when I was in college. Uh, yeah, the only people that are clapping are people that don't know how to fix their own computers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, it's so funny because so, a, a lot of my friends are technically savvy, and for the first 10 years of GeekSquad's existence, they just could not even believe that people would pay to come into somebody's home and solve the problems for them. And now we have 25,000 people around the world. GeekSquad is a testament to the fact that there's a whole other world out there of people that do not know how to do this stuff. And uh, even some, now some of our biggest growing businesses in Silicon Valley, because you would think that these people that are building the chips and the software, but they're so smart that they don't have time to like even make their own beds at home. They're at work all the time at Google, so they actually hire us to do a lot more stuff than you'd realize. So what I want to talk about though is that I just love bringing this stuff to everybody else, not the 1% of people who are very comfortable with technology, because that's when this stuff gets really, really fun. And if you look at the 80s, I and mean, I got my first computer when I was you know, eight years old, and uh, I thought it was the greatest time to be in technology. But the computers couldn't talk to each other. And then in the 90s, uh, I went to college and I saw the web, and okay, now the computers can talk to each other, and they could do more. Uh, but this last decade was even better because, oh, it's not about the computers talking to each other, it's about people talking to each other through social. So now what's going to happen, I think we're about to uh, see the biggest trend yet, but I want to go back a little, a little bit. Because in my business, I just see where all the technology doesn't work. And uh, despite engineers' best intentions, uh, even with Apple, uh, being in people's homes and offices every day gives you a completely different experience. That's why my Twitter handle, every time I type it in, I'm going to rename myself Estrogens. Because that's what Apple apparently wants me to call myself. Because <laughs> if you start typing R. Stevens in Apple, now, I love Apple products. I have all their stuff. And I recommend people buy them because uh, if you have Apple, now that I don't work at Best Buy any longer, I can tell you this. <laughs> I won't make less money off of you if you own Apple products. So um, I have no problem with autocorrect with Apple. It's just that I feel like when I correct it, when I correct autocorrect, more than two or three times, it should take a hint. And this is the next big trend in software. Right now, we're all thinking in terms of apps. But pretty soon, apps are going to start talking to apps. And that's where we're almost going to need a new word for what's going to come next. I just want to kind of take you through that. My goal is to show you what, what I'm thinking in hopes that it kind of sp uh, spurs an idea. So he asked me to talk about social, and I'm going to kind of talk about anti-social. Uh, I'm in a people business. We make house calls. We show up. Uh, you know, it's face-to-face. And that's all you ever hear from people saying, well, that is how a business has to be. But uh, I can't cite the exact study, but Harvard did a study like 20 years ago that uh, showed that people prefer automation over human contact if the automation is done well. I mean, I don't know about you, but I much prefer to use a boarding pass on my mobile phone than to go up to the ticket counter. I haven't even been into an actual bank branch in I don't know how many years. So when I use the term antisocial, what I mean is that you shouldn't even have to lift a finger that your Maps app should talk to your calendar app and know that there's a traffic delay and tell you to leave sooner rather than this fixed 15-minute alert or 30-minute alert. And this is the era that we're about to move into. And um, I think it's going to be one of the biggest trends. And you're just seeing some apps now that begin to, begin to do this. So this is, this is why most service companies suck, because this is all you need to get into the business. And this is what I started with, uh, a mountain bike and a cell phone. So, uh, uh, you learn a lot uh, when you go to people's homes and offices, and uh, I'm not going to really talk much about this, um, but um, you know, this is the stuff that we support. Uh, 
but there's all sorts of things that you're not really controlling right now. But there's all these things that happen in your home that just now are going to begin to talk to each other. I mean, if you have kids and you have a gas fireplace, let me tell you what, you want that automated. Uh, because the kids are always going to leave it on. And most thefts occur because the garage door has been left open overnight. That's where most theft occurs when you have a, a garage and a home. A simple rule would be if a garage's door is open more than 20 minutes and there's been no motion around the area, it should just automatically shut. Right now, you have to be a geek to program all this stuff. But think of it. I mean, uh, the Tony Fidel, the, one of the guys that worked on the iPhone, uh, has a new company called Nest, and they make this thermostat that's like $400. Um, but it's the beginning of a whole series of products. The Nest thermostat looks at what time it detects motion. It looks at how long it takes to warm up a room and adjusts the time at which it turns the heat or the air conditioning on. And this idea that something will program itself. And this is what's exciting because you won't need me to set it up for you. And the idea that over time, we're going to move actually from automation to what I call anticipation. And that's going to be uh, uh, the next trend. And I always think of this business. Now, if you remember, if I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and there was a business in the 80s. It's, it's out of business now. It was called the Psychic Friends Network. Now, um, the problem with this business is that you have to call them. So, yes, I mean, if you have to call a psychic, their business is not for real. So. But I believe it. What I like about the word psychic is it implies a promise. Okay? There's automation. There's anticipation. Saddam Hussein used to say, I know who will betray me before they know it. That's the ultimate dream of a repair person. If I sell you an extended warranty, I want to know that it's going to fail before even you know it. And there are ways to actually detect that. Um, because most of you aren't cleaning the lint filter underneath your refrigerator, or there's a two drain traps in a dishwasher. Well, if that gets clogged and the motor starts working harder, it's going to draw a little bit more electricity. There are ways to predict failure in the world that we're just going to begin to see. And I think we will get to uh, psychic. There's a little uh, website out there right now called IFTTT. It stands for If This Then That. This is super exciting. Some people call it the duct tape of the internet. You're beginning to see apps that talk to apps and the ability for your phone to um, alert you and help you train and automate everything about your life, um, where it will detect things. Like every time I get in my car, it makes me hit the warning button on the GPS navigation. Like I shouldn't have to do that more than like three times. And so this is where I think I want to kind of uh, encourage you to think about instead of automation, which is kind of fixed, the idea of anticipation, something that's constantly changing because we're all uh, going to be kind of be moving around. So here's my hierarchy of anticipation. Once is a hint, meaning once you do something, your apps and your phone are going to begin. And this is something you think you'll expect over time. Uh, okay, once is kind of a hint, but then twice kind of becomes a pattern. Uh, three times becomes a preference. And then if companies and apps are listening to what you're doing automatically, without you having even to state it, then it kind of becomes a habit, and then you kind of get to loyalty and the stickiness uh, of an app. And so I think that's going to lead to a new model of privacy, which I call prefacy. And prefacy is not, it's like there's all these things about us that aren't private per se, but they would really make things a lot easier if you didn't have to tell every hotel what your favorite uh, newspaper was or your food allergies or those little things. And there's a relationship you have with this information between you and your phone. And I think we're going to get to a model where um, apps will begin to broadcast these preferences ambiently. Thank you very much.